Hi, welcome back. I have another video where we're going to take a look at the brand new Knights of the Realm on Foot for Bretonia. This is a kit that was released specifically for Warhammer the Old World. And inside are 20 brand new plastic Knights of the Realm who are, of course, on foot. Um, th this is a really nice kit is what I'm going to you know start off with. Um, as you would expect from Games Workshop's modern offerings, they really don't put out too many bad kits at this point. Uh, it's more just down to basically do they fit with what you consider Warhammer because things have changed um, in terms of scale and in terms of, um, you know, the design direction over the years. So with a game like Warhammer Fantasy that has been being played for, you know, 40 years at this point, um, you know, various generations of people, the expectation is going to be different for everybody, so keep that in mind as we take a look at these. But I want to get into the box itself. I always like looking at the boxes because for me, um, you know, you do um, eat with your eyes first, as they say. And this box is really nice. It is very clearly Warhammer the Old World with the blue uh, background. I kind of wish it was centered. I mean, it's not a big deal. I just find it weird that the... Um, the name is not centered more, but it's obviously because they left a space for a artistic piece to fit in. So it's not the end of the world. It's just a little weird, I guess, uh, to not see a centered, um, font that are not see that, you know, the words aren't centered is what I'm saying. But otherwise I like that we're going back again, uh, to imagery of the unit painted up on the table, not a painted unit sitting in a white space or a black space and you know that ultra clean modern look that they did for a bit um i i prefer to see the miniatures painted up on a table or straight up art uh like the sixth edition boxes tended to have but this here it's really nice as far as a box goes flipping it over you can see sorry about that a little i should have gone the other way um you get two ways to build these guys. They can either have uh, great weapons or hand weapons and shields. And there's all kinds of different bits in here that we'll get into in just a minute to make these guys stand out from each other as you uh, build them. And also, you're going to be able to use these bits on the older kits, they say. I haven't tried yet, but I'm sure um, for the most part things will fit in okay. They don't seem to be too far off in terms of scale, that um, it's really going to stand out. And I think that any scale differences probably will be offset by the quality difference in terms of sculpts. So, basically, if you like these heads better, they might be um, better on your Knights of the Realm and Errants and whatnot. They also give us some suggestions on paints. Uh, they do include a brand new transfer sheet. I prefer the old one because the old one was all colored and move this up a little bit. Sorry. Um, it was colored and it had more imagery. This is just basically the ax as far as I can tell. And the fleur de lis, you miss out on all the other, um, um, they're not dukedoms. I was going to call them provinces, but that's the empire. Um, and yeah, anyways, your point is though, these are really nice. You can see a close up of one guy here, um, uh, a musician. They're, uh, they're really well done. And this is apparently a 100% scaled image. So we're going to set this aside. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to bring out the sprues so we can take a look at those. All right, there we are. Inside, you're going to find six sprues of which there actually are only two different ones. You're going to receive two of this sprue and four of this sprue. With these, you're going to be able to make all of your guys, again, 20 guys, either hand weapon, shield, great weapons or a mix and because there are two of these sprue this is the command sprue um, i'm calling it it has the option to make two commands uh, out of the box if case anybody was concerned about that so you have the option to play two small units of 10 um, or one large unit of 20 and later on if you happen to be able to you know, be able to only get um, a few extra knights let's say you don't buy a whole box you just buy some off of somebody uh, you'll already have had two command options available on your sprues if you wanted a second unit that way. 
Um, let's take a look at the basic sprue first. This one here has all of your bodies. I'm going to pull this out of the way actually completely to make this the center. So if you wanted a second unit that way. Um, let's take a look at the basic sprue first. This one here has all of your bodies. I'm gonna pull this out of the way actually completely to make this the center. So all of your knightly bodies are on here, um, or at least the majority of them. Like there, I think there is a little bit on the command sprue still, but most of it you're gonna find here. You're also gonna find the majority of your swords and shields on here. I believe somewhere on here there's also an axe, but that might be on the, yeah, there it is. If you want to have an axe for a hand weapon. But yeah, the knights themselves are very nicely detailed. They're in um, poses suggesting that they're moving forward or that they're uh, bracing. And the details are very nice. I'm going to try to bring this down closer. There. So yeah, the, the, the knights themselves are really well detailed. But those of you who have a pretty good eye for scale can probably already tell these are quite large. Um, I will show off an example at the end of a built one next to a Knight of the Realm so you can see how large they actually are. This is something I think we already all knew just from, just from seeing the photos of these guys built next to the rest of the range. But frankly, um, it's not something that bothers me too much. I already have so many um, eras of sizes throughout my armies that there is going to always be some scale issues. But if you do use mainly much older Bretonians, um, fourth and fifth edition ones, uh, and I think third edition had a good selection as well, if I recall, but again, I wasn't uh, playing back those days. I've said that before, just I just know a bit about them. Uh, these guys are probably going to be massive by comparison to anything else you have. Um, so do keep that in mind. Overall, though, I really like things. I like the larger shields that these guys come with. Um, they're all quite nice sized. If you look at the old Knights of the Realm shields, um, they're not that much smaller, but the the um, they are more of a kite shield, like a true kite shield that's very thin. Uh, I think that's what they're called, is a kite shield. They're roughly the same shape as these, but they are, again, thinner. This here is... I don't know all of these. I think this might be called a heater shield. But don't quote me on that, and if you want to correct me, I'm totally happy to hear the actual proper name for this. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're really nice. They have the nice uh, additions of, like, Fleur de Lis and whatnot, whereas the original Knights of the Realm ones were, you know, that rounded, triangular shape, um, and they just have, like, a metal um, ring around them to keep it all together. And, yeah, the swords, too, again, very nice. Everything is much less exaggerated in this newer stuff than you would see in older Games Workshop stuff. Um, that's going to be because this is not hand sculpted. And I think also the casting process is much more uh, friendly to thinner pieces. Um, I don't always like this because at the end of the day, um, these do have quite a bit of bend to them. So it, it, I think there's more of a chance of things like swords breaking now than there used to be, but at the same time, I think the proportions are much more uh, realistic. Not everybody has a ginormous, um, you know, super thick and heavy sword. These are much more, uh, you know, what you would expect to see. And yeah, I mean, there's not too much to say about these things in general. As far as building them goes, you have a front and then you'll have a, a back. Uh, these two things together were, or a side. They'll create your, your basic knight shape. There's also going to be one piece. I, should, I keep moving this around. I should just find one piece that's closer. Um, there's the one piece sword arms, but the shield arms are two pieces. You'll have one piece here is the shield plus a small one here. Uh, between the two, that's how you make your shield. So basically that's half an arm that goes to the shoulder and the other half is on, is on the bottom of the shield like this. The interior is also uh, molded, decorated. You can see wooden planks here. 
most older shields from War from Warhammer uh, were flat. It was very rare that they had anything on the back. I do like this touch that you can see the wooden planks it's made of. And yeah, overall, it's a really nice kit. You have some heads on here. I will try to bring this up and get him in focus because he actually has nice details. Um, I really like these heads. Now, they're, again, everything's a little more spindly than what we're used to. Uh, again, I'll show that off. But it is better proportions. This guy here, though, I will point out is he's one of those ones where Games Workshop decided that you would build a helmet and then you would shove a face. In, well, not sorry, build a helmet. You would clip a helmet and then shove a face into a little hole. So if I can get that in focus, maybe I can get some more light on this too. There, that might help. Yeah, so there's a very, I don't know how to, it's also at a weird angle, so I can't really show it well, but yeah, I, I can't show this, but there's, there's a face there. It gets pushed into this helmet. Um, he might not be the only one, but yeah. Here's the up close if anybody wants to see it. Very nice stuff. High quality um, miniatures from Games Games Workshop, as basically I think any of us uh, who have been buying over the years can expect. Their, their stuff is really nice. I'm going to bring back the second sprue now. This one again is what I'm calling the command sprue, but this is also where you're going to find your two-handed weapons. And there's a good variety of things on here as well. Bunch of heads, so... There's um, a nice selection of pieces in here. If you look closely, though, you can see the arms are different on these. That's just uh, something I want to point out because I was just talking about the build process. You're going to have these types of arms instead. They are whole arms minus the hands, and the hands are on the weapons. So these guys have also three-part weapon arms, uh, but they're all connected. So that's something to keep in mind if you don't like uh, connecting hands. These guys have to connect two of them for these great weapons. And yeah, you get a lot of stuff on here. Uh, you get lots of enclosed helmets, a half helmet, and then the other half is mm, somewhere on here. I forget where. This is the guy I've built. You'll see him in a minute. He's got very nice, big, outstretched, like, Pegasus or Eagle Wings or something on his helmet. He's your champion, obviously. You've got your musician. Again, all kinds of different axes. They're various shapes, as you can see. They're not all the same. Um, this, I assume, represents the fact that these are weapons that are created by the, the knight's families, having them crafted. They're not just something out of an armory that are being mass-produced. Um, they're a little more ornate and special. You also have the three pieces that make up the... Well, they're calling it a banner... Um, I really like it. It's got like a little shrine basically on a stick to the lady. All these locks. Um, I made an assumption about the lore for this. I've never seen a confirmation anywhere, whether I'm right or wrong. But these locks, I believe, represent the knights of the unit um, locking themselves and their love, their dedication to the lady. Uh, they've each provided a lock, is my theory. Uh, they've locked it on. And that's their devotion to the lady in physical form that they can carry with them into battle. Um, that would be based on that bridge in France that you would put locks on to show your love to somebody. That I believe a couple of years ago they cut all the locks off because they were about to make the bridge collapse. Because there was literally, I don't even know how many hundreds of thousands of locks apparently just covering this bridge. Um, I, think that, I think that's what they're doing here. Is a play on that. Um... There's not too much more to say here. Um, I do think, as far as the banner goes, I'm probably going to build one of these, and then I'm going to figure out how to give them a different banner for the other guy, the, the other unit I build, because I'm going to build two of these, and my plan is uh, ten of these guys with great weapons and ten with hand weapon and shield, and I'm going to fill out the other ten guys I would want per unit with 3D printed options uh, from Highland Miniatures. Um, the thing is with these, these are $100 for 20 guys, I don't actually think that's a bad deal. I think 20 guys at $100 is quite good. But I feel like after I build 10 of each style, I'm going to basically have, you know, dealt with the the mix of variety you can really do. Um, and I'm going to move on to something else. And also, again, at $200 for two units of 20. I'm not sure if I'm as into that idea. You know, at that point there, I do have to start thinking about the financial cost 
of getting that much, but um, I think one of these are definitely worth it. Really nice stuff. Again, you know, it, it's just great quality uh, sculpting from Games Workshop. If you don't like modern Games Workshop, you're not going to like these. But if you are a fan of modern stuff, you know, going towards things you would expect to see from Age of Sigmar in terms of quality, obviously the design uh, philosophy is very different from Age of Sigmar here. But at the same time, I, also, I actually think these guys would probably fit fine into like a Cities of Sigmar list um, and, you know, get, give a fluffy reason for why they have a Fleur de Lis and a Lady instead of Sigmar. Maybe their city, for some reason, has a slightly different belief of what, you know, what Sigmar is. And it's because maybe, you know, they're the descendants of Bretonian survivors or something. I don't know. I don't know enough about uh, Age of Sigmar lore to really, you know, give you a 100% reason of how that would work. But I think that'd be still fine. These guys are going to be the right scale. I think they look good. And they're quite, you know, ornate. Just like the new Cities of Sigmar guys are, even though, you know, the basic dudes. Anyways... That's all I'm going to show off today uh, as far as the sprues go. I want to pull out now the built example. And here he is. This guy here is going to be my champion for the hand weapon and shield unit. He looks really, really good. Um, if I can get some... There we go. Yeah. It's just a very great looking model. I can't wait to get a chance to paint him up. I love the design of him all, you know, if with his, um, you know, flowing tabard that's like billowing around him, billowing, sorry about that, billowing around him while he moves. I like his, um, his very large and ornate helmet. You know, the shield is nice. Just everything about this guy, I think is great. Sorry about the, um, the loss of focus at times, guys. This is a new camera setup that I'm trying. Um, so far, so good. I broke my last mount. Um, you know, it was just a cheap one that was attached to my ring light and eventually it snapped. I knew it was going to happen because I have a big phone and, uh, you know, it is what it is, but until something new comes in, I have this like mount on my, well, an old boom arm. So it's supposed to be holding like a microphone, but it's got my camera and, you know, we'll see how this works out. And yeah, here is a Knight of the Realm next to one of these guys. As you can see, um... He's quite large, he's, you know, comically so in some ways. But if you were to, say, put him like this, you know, about as close as possible to giving them the it's more light. Again, it's, it's very dark in here. I apologize for that. Um, it's a little overcast outside. Yeah, you can see he's a fair amount bigger. This as close as I can get him. Um... But at the same time, this guy is also side, you know, across the saddle, whatever they call that. Um, so maybe that would give him some more height. I don't know. But I do feel like this guy here, he's chunkier. You know, he's better fed. This guy here, um, I don't know. Maybe he decided because he just he he doesn't get a horse to ride him in to battle. He has to, like, eat a little bit extra ration to, you know, bulk up and maintain his physique. But yeah, um, they are definitely going to be... A little bit tall, uh, especially if you are used to the pewter knights on foot that GW used to sell. I think they actually have some in the made-to-order that'll be coming out fairly soon. Um, hopefully. I haven't got my made-to-order Bretonians yet. But, uh, yeah, anyways, I think that this is something that um, anybody who collects Bretonia, you should be happy with these. And hopefully this video helped you decide whether or not you wanted some. If you have any thoughts or comments, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.